What's going on everybody? Man Cave here and yeah, look, you actually get to see my face for once instead of just being the man behind the camera. That's thanks to a uh, tripod, but if you uh, can see behind me here, well, you can kind of see behind me here if I move some of this stuff out of the way. You see that we have the Axial SDX10 G6 kit. As I promised, I got one, so I'm gonna be doing a build thread on it. We all know, I'm not gonna get super in depth about this kit because I know a lot of you have already seen unboxing videos and uh, I'm just not gonna go there. So we know what comes in it, the uh, pinched body, the cage, the light bar like an XO style, um, Walker Evans with traps, Icon shocks, all that good stuff. Standard pretty much everything for any SAX kit, but with this build, I'm gonna do something a little bit special. Now, these two boxes here might not look like anything. I figured I might as well, since you guys all know that I'm uh, sponsored by Energy, I figured I'd use as many parts as I could possibly think of on uh, this G6. So, to kick things off, I'm going to be using one of their uh, Type 3 full aluminum axle. Now, it is set stock with a 3-link. I'm going to go ahead and use the 4-link uh, bars for it to go ahead and get it triangulated, but everything on this axle is completely 100% metal. We've got heavy duty gearing in it. We also have CVDs stock, so we've got a nice tight turning radius with them. Steering links, nice red uh, diff cover that looks almost like an ARB. So we've got that front axle fully locked and loaded, ready to go. So I'm pretty sure if you figure it out by now, if I've got a uh, solid metal front axle, the only thing that's really gonna match that would be a uh, full rear axle, which this one is in a bag, thank God, versus being wrapped with so much plastic. But it's a Type 3 fully locked energy rear. Once again, same heavy duty bevels. This one, you can hear the noise, I'm gonna be greasing it anyways. But full billet construction, I mean, that's a titanium wedding ring, and uh, it's pretty hardcore. So we've got a set of bulletproof axles, and uh, shock-wise, since I'm going to be running a little bit larger tires, I decided to go with the T3 uh, 105 millimeter piggybacks with functioning reservoirs. So just like the Kings. When that shock compresses, the fluid external bypasses the shock and goes into the reservoir. I should be doing it this way. It'll come up out of the shock into the reservoir, and then when it decompresses or you get your fallout, the fluid will come back through the reservoir into the shock to fill it back up. So, a pair of those to go all the way around on it. Um, I've had these, but I might as well throw them in there anyways. These are the uh, V2 billet machined uh, steel spline shafts they are uh, extremely heavy duty i've got a set of these in my uh, ultimate adventure xj and that rig is heavy as hell and these things hold up perfect so we got the shafts covered for tires i went with their machined uh, zero spoke type xn which if you look at them of course all the hardware is not in them they look just like the uh, rc four-wheel drive militant or the uh, Humvee wheels. And they're actually a Delrin wheel, which is nice rather than aluminum. Actually, another no, billet spoke, so even though, yeah, they're billet spoked all the way through and through. Tons of hardware, and uh, the tires are pretty much like a set of, uh, they look just like 1 9 Rock Locks or some uh, narrowed I Rocks. So I've got a set of four of those to give it the look. On top of that, what all SCX10s need, we have the heavy duty gear set, which includes your lower outdrive. It's a three piece, not a one piece. Your hardened idler, 
new top shaft and a steel spur with it too. It's a very, very nice setup. And then to do away with the stock exo style light bar, I got their realistic T5 adjustable spotlight bar with six LEDs. So nice red light bar, LEDs, just pop right into the back of it and it's even got the mounting brackets for it too. So that's epic. And then just to finish it off, something small but subtle, got a set of these nice little uh, toe shackles. Instead of using those uh, plastic ones that come with the kit, I'm gonna use these nice red ones that go with the rest of the theme. And uh, for the color of the body, I've decided to go with um, Patriotic Blue Krylon. Now this is Krylon Fusion. It bonds to plastic. You need no sanding, no priming, but who uh, sands a Lexan body or primes a Lexan body for that matter? This paint is about the only paint that I'll use other than automotive grade paint. So, basically to sum up this entire video, really quick, SCX10 G6 kit, locked and loaded uh, energy front and rear, full billet axles, splined uh, drive shafts, all steel, 105 millimeter, Piggyback shocks with functioning reservoirs, locked and loaded transmission gears, light bar, tow hooks, and new wheels and tires. So I'm really looking forward to this build. This will be the first build of the new year. And um, trying to think of something cool for the name. I want it energy inspired because it's using a ton of their parts on it. I mean, with this thing having the 10 inch wheelbase over the uh, 12.3 or the 11.3, like a Honcho or a Dingo, this is set at 12. They don't have the link kits yet for the uh, G6s. Now, I could be wrong, but the last time I checked, they don't have them. I know you can order just random links that are the right size that you know you're going to need, like it'll show, tell you the stock ones in the book. You can order whatever color you want links and then just make them yourself but I'm gonna wait until they come out with a uh, link kit for the G6 that way I can go ahead and just bolt on a full set of uppers and lowers seeing how I won't need the steering links because they came on the actual stock so that's pretty much it guys um, we got some more uh, rigs coming in uh, more parts on the way uh, tons of builds and uh, I know you guys have seen, I'm just going to detour real quick at the end of this video here just to show you, because uh, I know you guys have seen the, uh, the G2s, especially the one that I cut in half, which most of you are probably screaming, why did you do that, you idiot? I'll show you. It's a very simple answer, if I don't drop it first. This is why I cut it up. We have a full-on D90 pickup which I didn't want to go super fancy with the styrene work, so I left it kind of rough looking, especially the body line here. I wanted it to simulate a little bit of damage. And I'm probably gonna go in with some uh, hammered rust finish paint and kind of get it to where it looks like there's uh, surface rust popping off of it, but yeah. This is what used to be, as you can tell by the front of the grill right in here. This used to be the blue G2. It was shot with uh, Rust-Oleum's uh, camouflage series paint, and it's the, uh, uh, some kind of, oh, excuse me, knocking the camera around there. It is a, a deep forest green with uh, several coats of clear, and as I scoot you guys back into view, this tripod sticks out really far. Shot it with two coats of uh, deep forest green and then three coats of clear, so it turned out pretty good. But as I said, really looking forward to getting this started off. And uh, it's going to be an amazing build series. And when it gets done, it's just going to be one totally sweet ride. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, huge thanks to Energy for the uh, sponsorship. Really helped with the hookup on, uh, on parts. I mean, 
you guys really have uh, been my driving force ever since I started the channel. And uh, you've opened the doors for companies like Energy and uh, Venom and all that to sponsor me. And uh, it's all thanks to you guys. So uh, the reason I do all these videos is for y'all out there. So hope you guys have a great new year. Y'all got everything you wanted for Christmas. And uh, we'll catch you next time. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you later.